Welcome to Glasgow Rangers Nation with me, your host, Owen James, the channel that brings you your team every day, guys. This is your latest Rangers news, guys. Please obviously smash that sub and come and join the channel. Right, look, we are in the midst of an international break. Obviously, Scotland played tonight against Croatia. A um, number of other interesting games occurring tonight. Portugal, I think, playing against, uh, against somebody, Denmark, I think it is. Um, a number of interesting games happening tonight. Ross McCausland could appear for Northern Ireland um, in their game. Um, I think they, they've got Iceland tonight. I think I think I may know this somewhere. I think, well, let's have a look. Who about who Northern Ireland got tonight? You know what? Probably don't know actually. Oh no, Belarus. That's it. They've got Belarus. It was all Wales drew with Iceland, wasn't it? That was it. Um, it wasn't bad. Right. Okay. So let's. We're going to talk a little bit about some more stuff that's been coming out that Niels Coppen has been talking about. And look, I think we all know that. As a club, we're not in a financial position that we can really compete in the UK and top five European markets. You know, if you look at the European market, you look at the top five leagues in Europe, uh, the Bundesliga, uh, the Premier League, La Liga, um, Serie A and so on. And league, uh, you know, the realistically for top level players in that league, in those leagues, you're going to be paying a premium high price. You know, you, even in England, you look at the EFL Championship now and top, top talents in the AFL Championship are going for north of £15 million. I mean, you know, absolutely massive fees are being paid for some, you know, even young players who have had, say, one or two seasons have been OK or decent um, and now been, you know, £20, £25 million been spent on them. So the money that is obviously swelling around down south, that is swelling around in, in, in La Liga between Atletico and, Ace, and Real and Barca and all those clubs, you know, is actually astronomical. So, the chances of us, you know, buying from those leagues is, is is slim. Even buying towards the bottom end of those leagues, you're still looking at, you know, 10, 15, 12, 8, 9, 10, 8, 9, 10 million for players. You know, money which realistically Rangers cannot afford to commit to one single player. We're not in that financial position as of yet. Now, who's to say that in a year's time, 18 months' time, two years' time, with the trading model up and running, um, that we won't be in a position to be able to go and spend 10 million, 12 million on a player. That could be, you know, the possibility. We've seen that, you know, teams in Holland, for example, that have got trading models, PSV, Feyenoord, Ajax, uh, um, RZ, uh, Twente, have been able to do that in recent seasons. You know, the the three Portuguese teams as well, very much work on that trading model. model. Um, so again, you know, there's, there's the chances there to obviously go and invest in the future. Now, because of that, obviously, Rangers have to kind of think outside the box. We've got to, you know, move across Europe, move around the world when looking for players. And Niels Coppen has been talking about this. And we've got an interesting quote from him coming up. You know, it's right. You know, realistically, we have kind of, if you look this summer, done that. I mean, Hefte, obviously Brazilian, but was playing in Cyprus when, when we bought him. And Hefte, I think, has been, and Hefte's had some unfair criticism from some of our fans, um, which, you know, I genuinely think is disgusting. Kiefte has been fantastic. And I think one of the things that really impresses me about Kiefte is the fact that he's a, you know, he's a young kid. You know, he's still in his, in his early 20s. He is developing game on game. And even if you go back to pre-season and you look at Kiefte in pre-season, you're seeing a better player already now than you were in pre-season. You're seeing development there. You're seeing forward motion. You're seeing progress in his talent especially defensively, where he looks a lot more solid than he did at the start of the season. So, I mean, fair credit to Philippe Clement, um, to Anders Underlink, and to Sven, uh, Stefan, hey, Van, no, Sven, to Stefan van der Hayden for the work they're obviously doing with uh, Hefte in training. <clears throat> I mean, obviously Hamza Rigman is another one who's come in, started to show signs of promise, and I think will be a very good player. Again, signed from Morocco, from FC Rabat. You've got Mohamed Diamande, another player who I genuinely think gets some very unfair criticism from some you know, clueless fans about him. Um, you know, he's a good player. He buys space, he buys time. Yes, he has the odd bad game. But again, you've got to remember, this is a young kid. Young kids have bad games. They do because they're still learning their trade. They're still learning how to play the game. And I think, you know, to be honest with you, with him being such a young lad, he needs to be cut some slack. He really does. He's learning the game still. You know, he's not at the peak of his powers. The moment you start to hit... 27, 28, 29, and then you go into your 30s, you are already at the peak or are you on a downward trend? You know, you cannot get any better. These are players in Diamanda, in Hefte, in Baron, in, you know, Igman, who are only going to get better over time, hopefully. Uh, so I think, you know, Dio, again, needs to be cut from slap. But again, this was a player that came through the Death Dream Academy in Ghana and then obviously was signed up for Norgesland and we got him from Norgesland and we sort of, you know, again, and, and Scandinavia. 
So again, it's looking outside outside of the main leagues and you're thinking outside the box. And that's what Rangers are genuinely starting to do. And this is what they genuinely do need to start to do. You know, they're realistically, you cannot, you know, you cannot expect Rangers to go down south and buy a ready-made striker, even from the EFL Championship these days. You cannot expect Rangers to go to Portugal even, you know. Um, I mean, if you look at the top striker in the Portuguese league, someone Rangers were actually linked with uh, last summer, Victor Jokeres from Coventry. The guy's now worth, I mean, astronomical amount, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 million pound, uh, euro. Just incredible amount of money for a guy who can't stop scoring. But like I said, even down south, you know, uh, Joel Pirro, who Rangers were interested in, went from, from Swansea to Leeds to, for £12 million. Pounds. Again, that's money that Rangers have not got to commit to one player. Um, you know, and like, like I said, money for players in traditional leagues, in the top five leagues, is just not there. So, you know, Koppen is doing the right thing. He's applying a, a very PSV-esque model to Rangers and shopping outside of those big five leagues, shopping outside of those big European markets where you cannot afford them. You know, it's 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 almost like a family, isn't it? You know, a middle-income family in England. You know, a middle-income family in England would love, I suppose, to, to go and shop in Waitrose every day, wouldn't they? But, you know, because the products are very good on Marks and Spencers, you know, they get the best quality, everything there. But you realistically, on your budget, you cannot afford that. So you go and you shop in, you know, I don't know, in the Asdas, the Aldis, the Lidls of this world, because they're cheaper. And that's why you get products, you know, equally, de you know, decent products, not the best products in the world, not as good as M&S and Waitrose, but you're still getting decent products. And that's where we've got to kind of think of Rangers at this moment in time. So what Niels Coppen had to say about this shopping all over the world, yes, gets his shopping cart out, he gets his shopping trolley, he takes his trolley token, pops it in and off he goes um, to his transfer summits in, in Cancun and uh, all those exotic places. Like I said, I would love to see a transfer summit in Clyde Bank or a transfer summit in Gala Shields or the Kingdom of Fife, somewhere like that. I'd love to see uh, all the football the directors from Real and FC Barcelona and Bayern Munich and Liverpool and Manchester United and Arsenal and Chelsea come to Salt Coats on a cold, wet, windy Tuesday afternoon to have a have a have a, have a transfer summit. It would be absolutely freaking hilarious. Apologies if you're from those places. Um, you think I'm taking the Mickey on Julie out of your, your hometown. But this is what Niels Coppen had to say. It's important to look all over the globe about where we can compete financially without losing the focus on Scotland and the local market. So again, he's emphasised we'll continue to look in the local market. You know, obviously we've had the success of Conor Barron um, there. And I think, you know, you've got a situation where there's very some very good, young, promising Scottish talents coming through. You know, the Scottish game, in terms of its young players, there are a fair few coming through that are very talented. Lennon Miller, who I think is probably out of Rangers price range now as he's attracting interest from down south. Uh, Davy Watson from Kilmarnock, uh, Lyle Cameron from Dundee. These are all sorts of players that we should be looking at. Uh, you know, Coppen explained a bit more about what he was what he was on about. He says to look worldwide gives us more opportunity to sign these talents. And I think football is going fast. The UK market is getting more difficult for us financially. So we have to think outside the box and get creative. But also we have to look at profiles, even Brazil or Morocco, that is more suitable. It's about looking in the different market, but finding suitable profiles. Now, obviously, you know, he's talking about the likes there, Piefte and Hamza that I've already mentioned. And we were linked, I think, with a, with a couple of other Moroccans, weren't we, during this, um, and Egyptians as well, during this window. Again, very untraditional markets. Now, according to Coppen and according to the media, uh, manager Philippe Clement is very, very, very pleased with Piefte, very pleased with Igman, very pleased with how they've come in, very pleased with how they've settled down. And, you know, Piefte you know, has had a, a difficult, has got a difficult job to do. You know, he's coming in to replace Borna Barisic, who, you know, yes, in recent seasons has been poor, but was good during 55 and, you know, has some good good seasons for Rangers. And also Ridvan as well, who, you know, if he wasn't so injury prone, would be one of the best left backs in Europe, I think. You know, he is that, he is absolute quality. Um, so, you know, it is, it is development there. It is positive. Now, in terms of the Hefte deal, Coppen explained a little bit more about the Hiefte deal. He said, from January on, we kept a lot of contact with Hiefte. A lot of teams were interested in him. A lot of other clubs wanted to sign him, but he was really convinced about our project here. He's a very talented player for the future. He needs to learn a lot of things. He's only 20. He's had one year of experience in Europe. 
but he has the right mentality to fight and be there for this team. He has got a lot of physical and technical qualities. We made a big fight during six months to get him here. So, you know, it's clear that Hefte is obviously someone that, you know, that the Rangers have put a lot of faith into, put a lot of effort into getting. And I honestly believe that this is a great move, you know, a, a fantastic move for the club. You know, I like Hefte. I like how he's coming. I was, I'll admit, I was concerned about him at the start of the season. You know, I was concerned, you know, about his his ability, his defensively ability, but he certainly started to put that, lay that. And I think one of the things that I saw, you know, in recent games from him, in the Hibs game and the St. Johnston game, where Rangers did actually play quite poorly, from him was he's got a bit of a nasty streak in him. He's got a bit of a, you know, that sort of terrier-like, you know, fight, fight and bite in him. And I think for a long time now, one of the things that's levelled at Rangers as a club is that they're too nice. We've lost... The Sooners, the Herlock, the Butchers, you know, the Rina Gattuso. Is that that bite, that fight, that, you know, that we used to have? And I'm sure you've heard this story, and I'm sure I've told this story before. But, you know, Rina Gattuso was a guy who, you know, showed fight, battle and grit. No matter where he was, no matter when he played, he showed that fight. And I, I'll always remember this story that was told. It's a bit of an aside here, guys. I'm sorry. I just love this story so much. It was the... Week running up to the Celtic game, the old firm game, wasn't it? And uh, Rina Gattuso was in training with the, with the rest of the Rangers team. And he was running around, putting in 110% effort again, kicking the shit out of his teammates, literally flying into tackles, sending players up, up a height, just going through players, smashing into players, genuinely just causing mayhem. And what Smith was absolutely doing is not. He was just like, oh man, he's going to injure someone. We've got Celtic coming up at the weekend. And he's going to do something. He's going to injure somebody. He's got to calm down. But Gattuso's English was really poor. So he needed someone who spoke Italian. So he turns to the coaches and he says, you know, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And one of the coaches, I can't remember who it was, said to him, well, Gaza speaks Italian. He was with Lazio. And Walter Smith goes, oh, yeah, that was it. I'll get Gaza. I mean, of all the people to pick, you do not pick Gaza, do you? I mean, you just don't. So anyway, Walter calls Gaza. Over. He goes, Gaza, Gaza, come here, come here. He says, tell Rina, tell Rina he needs to calm down because we've got Celtic at the weekend and just chill. Oh, OK, says Gaza. So Gaza goes over to Rina Gattuso and in his broken Italian, he says to him, Walter says you're not putting enough effort in, you need to put a bit more effort in it training or else you're not going to get picked on, picked at the weekend. Anyway, off goes Gattuso, flying into more tackles, kicking more people and Walter's there pulling his hair out going, Gaza, what did you say to him? So yeah, you know, great story, great stuff. But that's the sort of player that Hefte, I think, has the potential to be. He has that evil streak in him, I think, um, that South American players often do have. I think, you know, you can only you can look back, can't you? Some of the other South American players that have that have kind of you know done the unglamorous things, the Carlos Dungas of this world, the Luis Suarez. Although Luis Suarez was very very talented, he was a, a vicious little bastard at times, wasn't he? So I think Kiefer's definitely got. I think Raskan's got it to some degree as well. But I mean, it, it is certainly um, you know for me a positive, you know that what Kiefer's done and the fact the club have done that and. It's refreshing to see that Rangers are getting away from the core markets where in the past we've signed players from and we've not had success. Going to the championship and signing players who are has-beens, players who used to be good, players who are injured and we, we can get them fit. We know that's just a load of bollocks. But, you know, all those things, getting away from that, going to Scandinavia, going to the Middle East, going to, which is a dangerous place to go to, going to Eastern Europe, going to South America, going to Africa, Going to these places, you know, that have got some very up and coming talented football footballers. I mean, you've just got to look. I mean, Morocco now, one of the best footballing nations in the world. I mean, they they finished what fourth in the Olympic Games. They finished third or fourth in, in the World Cup. I can't remember now off the top of my head. Um, you know, some fantastic players coming. You know, come, from, come uh, Moroccan players that we've seen. You know, around and you know, not just that. You know, you're seeing, um, you know, the whole situation. I mean, Mohamed Salah. One of the best footballers in the world still at 32, an Egyptian. You know, you've seen, you know, just some absolute talents there. Um, you know, Omar Mamouche, who plays for Eintracht Frankfurt in Germany, absolutely smashing the smashing goals in, in the Bundesliga. Again, German. Again, so again, um, an, an Egyptian player. You know, you look around around Africa now and you see talent. You see genuine, genuine talent there. Um, so look. Overall, it's good that we're shopping beyond these markets and we're getting away from those traditional markets that have let us down in the past. And, you know, as much as I hate to say it, maybe we're taking a leaf a little bit out of those across the city's books. Um, you know, what brought Anne success 
at Celtic was shopping outside of traditional markets. He went to, went to Japan in a market he knew, of course, but he went to Japan. He brought in Maida. He brought in Hatate. He brought in Kyogo. You know, he brought in players that were a bit time seen as a bit left field, a bit like, where the hell did that come from? A bit like, I suppose, Hamza does in terms of from, you know, from, from Morocco. And, They've made a difference for them. They really have. And as much as we hate them, we've got to say, well, you know, they've done really well with that. But, you know, it's, it's a chance for us to kind of, like I said, not copy as much, but, you know, use a different transfer philosophy because our philosophy in the past quite clearly hasn't worked. And as Einstein himself said, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And I think that's what, as a club, we've done transfer strategy-wise in the past gone down to England, looked in the championship, Ben Davis, Kieran Dowd, Todd Cantwell, yada, yada, yada. It's all gone horribly picked tongue. It hasn't worked out. We haven't won anything. We've won three trophies in 12 years. So it clearly hasn't worked. So this new way that Coppin is bringing in, this new vision, is a good, clear one. And it's interesting to hear the reasoning behind that and the realisation of where we are as a club at this moment in time. And the fact that he has a real handle on that and an understanding of what he's working with, understanding the budget constraints he's working under, and that's what he, how he's tailoring his scouting. You know, he's not just going out and saying to, you know, to coming back to the, the board or to whoever and saying, oh, I want to sign player X from Borussia Dortmund because he's outstanding. He's a brilliant midfielder. And I'm going, well, OK, then how, how much is he? Well, it's £25 million. Pounds. Well, that's not going to happen, is it? Or going down south to England and going, I want to sign player Y from Brighton because he's he's brilliant. How much is he? £10 million. That ain't going to happen either. So, you know, it's good that he's got this, he's got an understanding of where he is financially and what he's working with. And I think that is a positive for the club. And, you know, January, as, as I said on the video this morning, there is a plan there. There is a clear plan they're working to. You know, they've had the meetings. They've set up the strategies. They're scouting now. They're bring, they're looking at targets. And I think one of the great, one of the really positive things that I've seen from Coppen this this summer past is we haven't had the same as the past. You know, like when with Beal, we missed out on a target. Where it was that was it. We had no if nothing else. You know, and that was a bit how it's worked in the past. Whereas now we miss out on player X. We miss out on Tony Van Cordoba. We go to the next one was that uh, Brazilian kid from Spain whose name escapes me now. Um, I can't remember his name now. <laughs> Missed out on him. So we go to the next target who is Casan Weirjo. And that's who we bring in. And it, it, it's interesting to see there's obviously a, a hierarchy of lists there. There is there's a, there's what, what, what the NFL call a war room with, with, a, with a board there with this is this is our these are our target list for center back our target list for wingers our target list for strikers our target list for right backs for goalkeepers yada 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 and that's how it works. And it's refreshing to see that approach from the club. Guys, I'd love to know what you think of what Copper has been having to say, what I've said and said in this video. Thank you for watching. It's been a pleasure speaking to you as always on the channel. Please obviously do all the good stuff, like smash the like, share, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, do a little dance, whatever you need to do, guys. And remember always, we are the people. <music>